JP, good morning to you. Well, Lauren, I, I try. What I, number I still are we have... at now? 10? I'm still working on English on many mornings, Lauren. I'm, I'm doing my very best. But yes, I do have an homage to my Italian heritage over my left shoulder there. Barena, Italy. I do have a dream one day, Lauren, that we will see a baseball game in Stadio Olimpico in Roma. That's How my dream. How cool would that be? I'm sure you will get that assignment, you lucky duck. Hey, looking at the NOS, doesn't look like we thought it would, but there's some injuries. We were talking about Corbin Carroll. Looks like his shoulder neck injury was kind of paining him. And then Clayton Kershaw with that inflammation in his shoulder. Any updates for us now? Yes, Lauren, let's begin with Clayton Kershaw, certainly having a really strong first half for the Los Angeles Dodgers. He did experience some shoulder inflammation is what the diagnosis is now. He, he told reporters yesterday that he felt it during the sixth inning of this start at Coors Field. He did get a cortisone injection. Kershaw saying that he's hopeful that he'll find a way to get at least one more start in before the All-Star break, <laughs> but certainly he is an All-Star pitcher this season based on those numbers there. Look at that, 10 and four this year, a 2.55 ERA, basically back to his Cy Young peak with his numbers so far this season. And again, right now it is diagnosed as shoulder inflammation for Clayton Kershaw. Now the team that's been atop the NL West here for most of the last several weeks, the Arizona Diamondbacks, their all-star starter, Corbin Carroll back in his native Seattle for the All-Star game. You see it there, a bit of an issue there and some discomfort with, discomfort with that right shoulder. Now, that actually was something that he had operated on and missed a lot of 2021. So that's why the Diamondbacks were so cautious and a little bit concerned about that right shoulder yesterday. But after the game, Troy Lovello giving a very encouraging update that that right shoulder is structurally sound. Look at those numbers again. I think it's one of the storylines I'm most excited to see at the All-Star Game this year is Corbin Carroll back in his hometown of Seattle. And again, for now, he is day to day. Mm -hmm. The hope, Lauren, is that he's going to be able to uh, get back in the lineup here pretty soon and be back there in the lineup well before he is in his hometown for the Midsummer yeah, Classic. What's crazy to me is he's so young. He just left Seattle, right? And he goes back an All-Star. Pretty cool story. JP, I'm repping the Reds because there's so much excitement in the city, and it's not always moving and shaking, right? It's drafting and developing, and you and I both know that takes talent within the organization to recognize talent. What have you seen lately? Lauren, it, Ellie De La Cruz is an amazing story, and certainly he, it feels as though he's been in the major leagues for a couple of years. We talked about him so much. He just debuted this month, earlier this month. But to your point, Lauren, it's a multi-year process, and he was actually signed. We're coming up just days away from the fifth anniversary that he was signed by the Cincinnati Reds, their outstanding international scouting director, Trey Hendricks, and now their player development director, Sean Pender. And Sean does such a tremendous job with the Reds. You look at all this young talent coming through, whether it's Matt McClain, TJ Friedel, and Ellie De La Cruz. And, and I want to listen here to a conversation I had with Sean recently where he described how inquisitive, how curious, and how thoughtful Ellie De La Cruz is off the field as well. He truly is one of the most intelligent young players I've ever been around. Um, he wants to learn English and the, his ability to learn English is going as rapidly as his evolution as a player. Um, he has very high, uh, natural IQ he has an off the chart baseball IQ, but he also is someone that pushes himself. So you can ask some of our staff every time I'm in spring training, two things typically happen with Ellie. He wants to ride in your car, right? Home. And it's not because you know he'll take an Uber or he'll drive with other people, but he likes to drive with English speakers. And he'll ask you questions. He asks about your esposa. He asks about your niños. You know, he wants to know their names. He wants to talk to you. He wants to hear you speak English so he can learn to speak English. And the last thing that he always does is, as tall as he is, he gets out of your car. And it's not just me. There's other people that drive him home. He gets out of the car, at least with me. And he looks down, you know, as tall as he is, he's got to look down into my car and he goes, amigo, I'm a shortstop. <laughs>
I love that confidence, Lauren, and, and you see it there. These are all, for the most part, homegrown players that the Reds originally signed and developed. Of course, Sear acquired in a trade, but look at this list. And, and Sean also shared with me how impressed he's been by Jonathan India's leadership that he has shown now, of course, playing alongside Joey Votto. Lauren, this is a fun team to watch. And I love that that saying that Ellie has with everybody there. Hey, I'm a shortstop. And, and again, just the commitment, the intentionality to learn the English language. You see just what a magnetic star Ellie De La Cruz has come in a very short amount of time. A cycle already. We're going to be watching this young man shine brightly for years to come. All those guys shining. I love the story about Jonathan India. He said his dad is such a big Mets fan that he watches the Mets and he tapes the Reds and he watches them after. <laughs> so good.